G'day guys, my name's Dave Tran and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And in this lesson, I'll be teaching you how to play She Will Be Loved by Maroon 5. Now in this video, I'm going to teach you two different ways of playing this song. The first way is going to be without a capo and this is, and the second way I'm going to teach you how to play this is an easier version for the beginners out there that involves no bar chords, but it still sounds good too. Alright, so let's start with the easy way of playing this song. Now, if you want to learn how to play it without a capo, then just skip to the timestamp up here. For this easy version, you'll need your guitar in standard tuning and you will need a capo on the first fret of your guitar. Now, the guitar I'm playing in this video is a Cole Clark Fat Lady 2. If you want to find out more, there's a link in the description below. Now, if you want to master your chords, be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step by step guitar course. Let's start with the verse riff, and to play that, we'll need our index finger on the second fret of the fifth string and ring finger on the third fret of the second string. Now, we'll start by plucking the fifth string, holding that out for one beat, and then we'll be pinching the fifth and second strings together four times. Now these are all on eighth notes as well, so it will sound like this. One and two and three and four. Now on that four beat, drop your palm onto the strings just really lightly so that everything's muted. And that will give the riff a bit of a better feel as well. So that's it for the first chord shape. One and two and three and four. Now for our next chord shape, we'll just slide our ring finger down one fret to the second fret. And now middle finger goes on the second fret of the fourth string. So now we have an A7 chord shape. Now we're going to pluck the open fifth string, which is the bass note here, on the end beat after the four. So we hit the bass note and then the fourth string and then the second string all in a row. Now after we pluck that second string, again you want to drop your palm onto the strings so that nothing rings out. And one and two, like that. And on the end beat after the two, we'll pinch the fifth and second strings together and hold that out for one beat. And then we end this with three plucks. So it's gonna be the third string, fourth string, and second string. And in total for the A7 chord shape, and for our first two bars in total, Now the third and the fourth bar are almost identical. There's only one tiny variation here, and that's with this first B minor shape. So on the third bar, you'll actually need to take your middle finger and put it on the second fret of the first string. Now instead of hitting the bass note and holding out for one beat, we'll hit the bass note and then we'll hit the first string and then we'll pinch the fifth and second strings together four times. So it's one and two and three and four. Now when you hit that first string, you do want to let it ring out as you're pinching these four plucks. And then everything else is the same as what we had in the first two bars. So the third and fourth bar will sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And in total for the full riff. Now if that finger picking is too hard for you, then we can just strum some really easy chords. So we'll have a B minor 7 like this, and then we go to an A. Now the strumming pattern that we'll have will go down, down, up, down, up, mute, up, up, mute, up, up, down, up. Now the mute will be similar to a down strum, except when you come down with your down strum, your palm will hit the strings as well. So you just get that percussive mute. Now the point at which you're gonna change chords from the B minor seven to this A will be on the upstroke right after that first mute. So the really easy strummed way of playing the verse is this.
All right, after that we get to our chorus. And for our chorus, we have a nice and easy strumming pattern that goes down, up, down, up, up, down, up. For our first line of chords, we have a D, then we have an A, then we go to B minor seven, and then we go back to an A. For our second line of chords, it's almost identical except for that last chord, we go to a G instead. Now that second line of chords is also played through twice as well. And for our third line of chords, we just have a G strummed once and held out. So in total, chorus one sounds like this. Now for our second chorus, it's almost the same, our first two lines of chords, except the second line of chords is played through three times. And for our very final chorus and outro, we have those same two lines of chords, they're just repeated again and again till the end. Now the final thing we need to learn is the bridge, and that's really easy because it's very similar to the verse in terms of chords. We have a B minor seven, and then the A. Now we're gonna play this for the same strumming pattern that we had in the chorus. We're gonna repeat that four times, and then we're just gonna hit the G and hold that out at the end. So the bridge sounds like this. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, up. Now, if you wanna learn how to play it without a capo, we're gonna be using a lot of bar chords here. So for our verse riff, we'll start with the C minor bar chord like this. We're going to be hitting the bass note first, and then we're gonna be pinching the bass note and third string together four times on the two beat. One, two, and three, and four. Now remember, on the four beat, you wanna just drop your palm onto the strings so that those pinches don't ring out. After that C minor, we're gonna go down to a B flat seven chord. So it's the same as a B flat major chord, except you'll lift your pinky finger like that. Now on the end beat after the four, we have three plucks here. We're gonna hit the sixth string, fifth string, and then third string. And then after that, you do wanna drop your palm again to mute the strings, and that's on the two beat. And one and two. And then on the end beat after the two, we'll be pinching the bass note and third string together. Hold that out for one beat. And then we have three plucks after this, the fourth string, fifth string, and then third string. And in total for the first two bars, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Now the third and fourth bar are almost identical, except we have one added note. So after the bass note, we're gonna hit the second string and let that ring out and then do our four pinches. So. One and two and three and mute. When we go to our B flat seven chord, everything's exactly the same. So in total for the main riff, it will sound like this. Now for the chorus, we have all bar chords here. Now if you're struggling with bar chords, then be sure to check out my video here on the five biggest mistakes people make when playing bar chords. For this chorus, we'll start with an E flat bar chord on the fifth string. You can play it with your ring finger barring like that or with all three fingers across like this. So that's the E flat and then we're going to a B flat chord and then we're going to a C sharp minor and then back to our B flat. So that's it for the first line of chords. Second line of chords is almost identical except we go down to an A flat chord like that. Now for this chorus, we can play a strumming pattern that goes like this, down, up, down, up, up, down, up. But if you're playing this on an electric guitar, like I will in the playthrough at the end, I like to pinch the bass third and second strings and just hold it out for the full bar, like that. 
I think it's a bit more subtle, especially if you're playing on an electric guitar, but if you're on an acoustic, then you can strum this strumming pattern, which will sound like this. Now the second chorus is very similar except we play the second line of chords through three times. And the very final chorus and outro is just those two lines of chords repeated again and again. The final thing we need to learn is the bridge and it's just two chord shapes here. It's the C minor and then the B flat. And you can play that for the chorus strumming pattern if you want or you can just pinch those notes and hold them out for the full bar like I will in the playthrough at the end. Now the last thing I'm going to teach you is the lead part in the chorus, which is really easy to play. So index finger will go on the 8th fret of the 3rd string and pinky finger will go on the 11th fret of the 2nd string. Now let's break this up into 3 different chunks. For our first chunk there's 3 notes, we're going to hit the 3rd string twice and then with an up stroke we're going to hit the 2nd string. So down, down, up, like that. And that's our first chunk. We're going to repeat that twice. Now for our final chunk, it's just the third string and second string. So all together. And in a loop. So that's it for the harder way of playing it without a capo. So now I'll be doing two playthroughs of this song, the easy version and the bar chord version. And I'll have a vocal track on top for some context as well. So feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice playing along to and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching guys. Be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. As always, it would mean the world if you could hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click the little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on my updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions, and a request down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.